something too. This is my second channel. If you're not subscribed to my first and main channel, there will be a link down below as well as at the end of the video. Today, we're going to talk about how I did at my most recent craft show, and then I'm going to give you a checklist of things that you need to take to a craft show so you're prepared. So let's just dive right in and talk about actual dollars and cents of what I made. So to start off, so the biggest seller and what I sold out first was these laser cut journals. I only took 10 of them. I have a video on making these on my other channel and I had them at $10 a piece and I sold all 10 right away. They were a huge hit. Uh, next, that was the first time I've ever tried to sell them. I now know that uh, next time I need to take more. I also made little notepads, a smaller version of the journal. I only had a chance to make two of those and sold out of those as well for $8 a piece. Another thing that I sold out of is four clipboards. I have a video on making those clipboards. There'll be a link down below. And one person bought one and then another person bought the remaining three because she had three kids and she wanted to use it to hang up her kids' artwork. I never even thought about that. What a great idea. So I sold out of my clipboards. I sold 11 pencil holders that varied in price from $15 to $30, totaling $215. I sold one beer tote. I only took one. This is a leftover from my previous craft show from a couple years ago. I sold that at $45. I sold seven Ohio and Michigan art pieces ranging from $15 to $25. So I made $130 on those Michigan and Ohio pieces. Wine displays. This has consistently been my biggest seller at all my past craft shows. I have a video on making these wine displays. There'll be a link down below. I also sell the patterns and templates that you need to make your own. I'll have a link to that as well down below. I, I took eight with me. I sold seven and one of them was stolen, unfortunately. I've never had anything stolen from me at the, I know, right? Yeah, I could not believe it. I was just, uh, who would steal? I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to assume it was accidentally taken. I will, uh, let's, let's, let's take a, a positive attitude. So somebody accidentally took one of the wine displays and I sold the other seven. So I sold out of those. I always sell out of the wine displays. They're really easy to make and they sell quick. So I have a new cutting board book coming out very soon and I'm selling the cutting boards from that book. I took them all with me and I sold two. I sold the one with the random pattern of all the scraps. I sold that for $200 and then I sold the one that holds four ramekins. I sold that for $200 and those cutting boards will come with the book. I told the people that bought them like once I get the book and I will ship you a copy of the book. Those cutting boards, big money makers, big money makers. I, I took, uh, I think I took 10 of them and I sold two. So, um, I know at these craft shows that people generally don't buy higher end, really expensive items. They're looking, especially for this holiday one, they're looking for smaller uh, $30 and less gifts, uh, pieces that they could buy for gifts. And so I knew that I wasn't gonna sell many cutting boards, but I was very happy to sell two at $200 each. I took my bandsaw box book, uh, I sold three of those at $20, so that totaled $60. And then I sold one of the record crates for $125. I was hoping to sell them as a pair, but that didn't happen. The total of my sales was $1,366. Uh, let's talk about profit. There was a $10 application fee to get into this craft show. It's a juried craft show, so you pay to apply, and then if you get picked, if the, what do you, they, all these people apply and then they pick their favorites. I got picked to get in, so then I had to pay a $125 booth fee. So that is a profit of $1,206 and it doesn't include time and materials. I have no idea how much time I spent on these and I have no guess on how much I spent on materials. My best guess is somewhere between two and $300 for all the wood and, and everything but a lot of it was just made from different scraps and cut off. So it's really hard to guess my actual profit. So that is how I did at the craft show. It was, uh, in my opinion, I did very well. It was fun. I got to meet some awesome people. Some fans of the YouTube channel came by to say hello and some fans of the podcast came by to say hello. It was really cool. People got, gave me some cool gifts, which was amazing. So really cool to meet some awesome people while I was there. Will I do it again? Yes. I don't want to do, I'm not the kind of person that wants to do like five or six craft shows a year. One maybe two is plenty for me. All right, so let's talk about 
a checklist. Things that you need to take with you if you're going to do a craft show. The checklist is going to be different for every person and, and situation and the type of stuff that you sell and the type of craft shows that you're going to. But this is a general list of what I keep and what I need to take for the ones that I do. Number one, business cards. You need business cards. Not everybody's going to buy from you, but a lot of people are going to take a business card and check out your website or your Etsy store or whatever. So grab your business cards. You need to be able to take credit cards and debit cards. So I have this PayPal swipe that goes into my phone. A couple other companies make them uh, into it and Square, um, but then I can run, run credit cards through here for the sales. So I do cash and credit card. Speaking of cash, if you're gonna take cash, you need to take money to make change. So you have to go to the bank before you go to the show. You need ones and fives and tens and twenties. Um, your phone charger. If your phone is your way of taking uh, credit cards, you're going to need a phone charger. Now, not every booth will have power. Most booths that you have will not have power at all. But if you're lucky, you might there might be a power source nearby. So what I do is, what I suggest is take a an extension cord and a power strip. If you take a power strip, you will make friends with all the other crafters, I guarantee you, because everybody's gonna wanna charge their phone with this. If you don't have access to power, I suggest getting a power brick. So I have this guy. This will charge my phone 10 times over and my iPad a couple times over. This is amazing. They also come in smaller versions of this. So power is very, very important. One of the most important things that you might not think about is a fatigue mat. I have this guy down here. If you're gonna be standing for 10, 12 hours, it is an absolute must that you have a fatigue mat. If you are standing on concrete all day, you are going to pay the price. Also, comfy shoes. Gotta have comfy shoes, it's really important. And then I also take ibuprofen or aspirin because standing on, your, on my feet all day, Maybe I'm not in the greatest shape, but I get a sore back and sore feet. So ibuprofen, comfy shoes, and a fatigue mat. Uh, speaking of comfort, you're going to want to take bottled water and snacks. A lot of times these places have food trucks, but it's all always like greasy foods and things that may not be necessarily good for you. So uh, granola bars or nuts and water, and uh, we'll bring our own coffee. Kelly and I also take a flask of whiskey but that's just for fun. That is just for our own amusement. All right, um, extra tags. So you're tagging all your stuff with your prices. A lot of times those tags fall off or uh, something comes up you didn't expect. So always bring extra tags. Um, bring a Sharpie so you can write on those tags. And sometimes people ask me to sign the pieces, so I will bring a Sharpie with me. Another thing you're gonna want is bring a pen and a notepad. I use a notepad to keep track of all the sales. You can also have an inventory list and check that off. But a uh, notepad is great for writing down your thoughts. I have found that writing down my thoughts on the phone while in a busy area is a little bit more difficult because I'm trying to find an app. If I just have a pen and a notepad, I can, I can write things down very quick. So. Sometimes I'm like, oh, next time, I definitely want to bring this, and I'll write that down in a little notepad. Oh, and a lot of times you meet some cool people, and so I, uh, I had some people write down their email addresses for me. So that's just, you just want a pen and a notepad for various reasons. Depending on the situation, sometimes these booths come with tables and sometimes they don't. So you have to know ahead of time whether or not to bring your own table. And most of the time, they do not come with a, uh, with a table cover or cloth. So I have this table cover cloth that I take with me when needed. Bags and tissue paper. So we have these paper sacks from Uline and I brand mine, I don't have um, my branding ink pad with me, but I have a make something ink pad where I'll stamp it and then stamp the bag and I'll have branded bags. You'll also want tissue paper to wrap your handmade goods in before putting in the bag. Booth sign and display. So at my booth, you want, you want to brand yourself. You want people to know who you are. So at my booth, I have this display, which we made a video of this a couple weeks ago. And basically, I just have my iPad in here, got the, got the branded logo in here, and then it also holds my business cards. Um, 
I'm going to answer a, a couple questions. A lot of people were asked, asked saying, hey, you don't have a hole on the side here to charge the iPad. The craft show was 10 hours long. And this guy, this iPad, it's an iPad Pro, it's the bigger screen, it ran all day. I took a 30 minute dinner break and used that to charge the iPad with the power brick during that break. Otherwise, it ran all day and I just have my videos running on loop and they can see that I have a YouTube channel. Lots of little kids came up and just stared at the screen and lots of big kids, adult kids too, like were, um, just, they just found uh, the building stuff really cool. So brand yourself, bring a display, bring a sign, whatever you do. If you are collecting email addresses for a list, bring an email list, a sign up sheet where people can write down their name and email address. An inventory list to mark off your sales. I think we went over that earlier. Check to see if your booth space comes with a chair. If not, you wanna bring a chair or a stool. I prefer a stool because I like to sit up and, and nice and high. And it's really easy to get up and, and uh, sit back down because you, you're moving around a lot. You're talking to people, you're shaking hands, you're making sales. So I always suggest a stool. Custom order forms. I personally do not take custom orders, but many of you might want to do so. So uh, have, uh, you know, so when you talk to somebody, you want to get their name and address and their email and their phone number and what they want. So custom order forms. Most of these events require you to have a sales tax certificate. And this is going to uh, vary greatly state by state and sometimes even county by county. So check with your, check your local tax laws to see what you need. I am registered in the state of Ohio. And so a lot of these uh, um, craft shows just require you to have that certificate. The thing is, I've never been asked to present my certificate, but I always have it with me just in case. And then finally, bring a camera. You probably have a camera on your phone, but you wanna take a photo of your booth when you get it all set up and then you wanna take photos uh, maybe throughout the day. And what this is gonna do is the next time you do a craft show, you can see how things were set up. Maybe you can improve upon that. Maybe you liked exactly what you did and you need documentation of that. And then, you know, for your own website or your Facebook page or your Twitter page, you wanna get some photos of some people at your booth. So have a friend take a photo of a, of a sale exchange. Just make sure there's no credit card numbers in that, in that photo. So uh, yeah, I always, I always take notes on like what I could do better, what I liked, and um, and I know now that I need to make more journals and notepads. Those things sold like hotcakes. People also asked about refills, and I said, well, that's that's kind of tough because you'd have to find the exact same notepad. And so what I might do next time is I might buy just a bulk, and then I I can sell the um, I can, like I'm have papers to sell as, as refills for those notepads, or at least use a common type of notepad where they can go out and buy refills themselves. So I think that is it. That, that is pretty much everything. This is my second channel. If you're not subscribed to my main channel, I highly suggest doing so. We have videos of making all these things. So that is it. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. <music>